Hey everyone, welcome to Better Breathing Coach. I'm Janice and I'm going to talk about why you can't catch your breath today because I get this question a lot and the answer is very simple and what you can do about it, also pretty simple. So before we jump in, hit that subscribe button below the video so that you guys don't miss any of the good juicy content that I'm putting out there to help you breathe better. And this question applies to people with COPD, asthma, any kind of respiratory or lung condition, but also it applies to athletes who notice when they fully exert themselves, they suddenly become really short of breath. So I'm going to talk about kind of what I call the hierarchy of breathing, right? How we breathe depending on our exertion and our activity level and what we can do about it. So if you're ready, Let's dive into that, but also if we could take a moment to just like lower our technical expectations because I don't do a whole lot of video editing, so we're just going to roll with it. Okay, let's talk about breathing. At baseline, when you are doing nothing but sitting here watching this video, you should be breathing with your diaphragm, which means your diaphragm, I'm going to stand up so you can see if this is where your diaphragm sits. Let's just pretend that's pretty accurate. If you inhale, it drops down, it contracts and it lowers, which pulls air in, and then it relaxes and it goes back to normal and that pushes air out. That's your inhale and your exhale at baseline. Pretty easy, except not all of us are doing that. Some of us, our abdomen's actually going in on the inhale, and then we actually squish our lungs and we can't get that air in. Okay, so. First thing, first step in the hierarchy of breathing is that your diaphragm does the work. It is the muscle made to breathe. And there are a whole lot of positive physiological effects, including triggering the vagus nerve and putting your body in rest and digest your parasympathetic drive. Awesome. We want to breathe with our diaphragm. It gives good feedback to our body and it's meant to do the work. Okay, so that's at baseline when I'm not doing anything. Then let's say I get up, I walk around, I'm tidying the house, I'm doing something, I'm going for a walk outside. I'm going to start to expand my chest wall. Okay, so my ribs are going to come out, my chest might lift because I've exerted myself. When I'm exerting myself, I have a higher physiological demand. My body is demanding more oxygen. Therefore, my respiratory system has to do something to increase the capacity, increase the amount of oxygen. So I take a bigger breath. Awesome, right? Okay. Then if I exert myself more, say I start into like a slow jog or maybe for me, a, a medium to good jog, I'm going to start to lift my shoulders. Okay. So now as I inhale, diaphragm's coming down, belly's coming out because that diaphragm has to go somewhere. Everything else has to move around it chest is coming out and now I'm starting to lift with my shoulders because I want to increase this space. I want to bring in more air. It needs to be bigger. Okay. Just to meet my physiological demand. Keep in mind, I'm in a jog right now and I'm not a good jogger. So it's, you're going to see me work for it. Now, let's say I'm actually a runner. Okay. We've already kind of got the first three tiers. We've got our diaphragm. We've got our chest wall. We've got our shoulders engaged. Now, I need to generate more space. I gotta prop my lungs open even more because I'm running and I need more air. So what do I do? I purse my lips. We've all seen the runners. When we purse our lips and we hold our cheeks in, it increases the back pressure. So you're actually using the air that you're breathing to stent open your airways, to prop them open, and keep them bigger and keep the air moving. So that's step four, okay? Diaphragm, chest wall, shoulders, purse lip breathing. And then the fifth thing we do, let's imagine that I have run a marathon. It's not likely to happen, I'm not a runner, but let's imagine, right? Or just think of people that you've seen at the end of a marathon, at the end of an Ironman. They all do this, it's called tripoding. So my hands are on my knees or on my thighs, and I'm pushing it. You can see my elbows come out. And the reason we do that is because it 
props our shoulders up, it props our rib cage open, and we don't have to do it with the muscle, we just do it with our posture. Okay, so even sitting, I can put my hands on my knees and I can tripod. And the reason I've tripoded is because it props everything open, right? Everything we're doing as we exert ourselves is to get more air, to help it flow easier, help it flow better, help it flow faster. So that's your hierarchy of breathing. Diaphragm, chest wall, maybe your, maybe your chest or maybe your rib cage at the side, then your shoulders start to lift. Keep in mind, this is at exertion. And then we purse slip breathe, and then we tripod. Okay, there's five steps in this hierarchy. Now, I want you to think about this. One, at baseline, are you breathing with your diaphragm? It's a self-assessment time. You can put your hand on your belly. When you inhale, your belly should come out. When you exhale, it should come back in. Inhale out, exhale, come back in. Beautiful. Okay. If that feels really, really weird to you, chances are you've had it flipped, right? This is going to get into some psychosocial stuff of we're taught to suck in. We're taught to be small. We want to be that, that petite size. So we're taught to suck in and we're, we're taught don't take up space and, and all this stuff. I want you to let your belly hang out. I want you to give yourself permission to take up some space. Explore. You're waking this up. Okay. So give yourself permission. Push your belly out. Let it feel good. It's going to feel weird if you haven't done that. Because here's what happens. If during your self-assessment, you notice that what you're doing is sitting on the couch and you're like, just to breathe, here's what you do. You have to train your rib cage and your diaphragm to start moving again. Because if you're just sliding your shoulders up to breathe and exhaling by lowering them down, what you're doing is you're at the third step of the hierarchy and you're not exerting yourself. So if you're like, why does everything feel like I'm running a marathon? Well, if you're doing this at baseline, the next recruitment that your body's going to do is it's going to purse slip breathe and then it's going to tripod. So if you just want to go to the bathroom or you want to go and make, you know, a snack in the kitchen and you're sitting on the couch breathing like this, when you get up, your next move is going to be purse slip breathing. You don't have a lot of reserve to move up. So if you're always feeling short of breath, check in with how you're breathing. Because if you're breathing like this, what you want to do is stretch out your rib cage. You can check out some yoga videos. I'll do some videos in the future. But just even stretching your rib cage with like a little cat cow, getting some mobility back in your ribs so they can start to expand and support your breathing and also just practicing your diaphragmatic breathing is going to help because it's going to open up those lower tiers of your breathing hierarchy. So we have a full span. We have a full range in the ways in which we breathe. But if you're already partway through, you can only go up unless you consciously open up the bottom couple options. So if you're wondering, why do I always feel so short of breath? It's because you're here and you only have here. If you want to improve it, you want to improve your chest wall mobility, stretch. That's all we're talking about, guys, stretch. And then practice breathing with your diaphragm. So I hope that makes sense. If you're like, okay, that's great, Janice, but how? How do I open up the lower, the lower tiers of this breathing hierarchy that you're talking about? Well, I'm gonna do a couple videos on that as well. So keep your eyes posted or follow the links because I'll put them in the video below when I've released them. But I hope this helps you understand, okay? And then, just think about this for a second, because this is where this is all going to. When you do breathe from your diaphragm at your baseline, and you can actually recruit every level up, imagine how easy it is to do things. Imagine how easy it's going to be to have your breath, and to feel good, and to not be limited by your breathing right? Even when you're exerting yourself, your diaphragm is going to be active and engaged. It's going to feel good. You're going to be like, wow, I have so much more reserve than I ever thought. And it's going to feel really good to you. So let me know if this helps. 
throw a comment below if this gives you some insight as to your own breathing, what you noticed about your breathing and how this can help you. I'm so excited for you guys to breathe well and enjoy life. That's the whole point of this. So thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.